We're now recording. How would you describe the state of relations between India and Pakistan today, and how do you feel about that? Well, in the relation between India and Pakistan is like weather here, hot, hotter, hottest. This time it is the hottest. And uh, I feel very sad because I want the relationship to improve and I want uh, both sides to live as friends. But what can private individuals such as yourself and your colleagues hope to do to improve relations? Well, I think the governments have failed in the sense that they have taken particular stands and they are not really budging from that. Now, how do we make them to, to change? This would only be the pressure of public opinion. And we hope, myself and my friends, will be able to create that kind of atmosphere, not only here, but the other side also, whereby people assert themselves and say we had enough of it. So we want to live as brothers, as friends. Uh, we are hoping that uh, we have made some progress. This is not the first time we are doing it, but we are making some progress. Do you see signs of hope with the coming generation in both countries? Are they putting the enmities of the past behind them, or are they recreating old suspicions? Well, I'm sorry that uh, because of ignorance, uh, because of lack of contact between the two countries, fears have got exaggerated. In fact, I would say the walls of uh, hatred suspicion have uh, grown higher than before and uh, that's sad and I think uh, if the both sides and I'm talking of the generation of today if they could meet each other they could uh, interact things will be better also the books on both sides especially on Pakistan side are very bad and they do inculcate some kind of hatred, some kind of bias towards a particular country. You've described the enmity between the two countries and the people of the two countries as prisoners of the past. Is that how you think? Yes. I, I think uh, what has happened is that, uh, yes, a partition did take place. Yes, we were one country. But then we separated. Uh, we became two sovereign countries. It was a part of agreement. All leaders at that time agreed to it. So when you have agreed to it now, let's start from that. Past was good, we always would, uh, can look back. But now we, what do we do later? Today we are entering the 50th year of independence, both sides. And still we are prisoners of those kind of suspicion, the past, they did that, we did that. So I think uh, if we could accept the fact that yes, partition took place, it was bad, are good, whatever may be. I don't want to go into the merits, I don't want to go to the history, but I want that something should be done whereby these two countries live as friends, just like Canada, America, soft borders, we should meet, that kind of thing, I'm hoping. Both retaining their identities. To broaden, broaden the subject out a little bit, back in 1947, you crossed the border on foot. Yes. It, uh, it was a terrible period. How, what did you witness of the trauma of partition and what did you feel about it at that time? Well, I was then living in a city called Sialkot, uh, which is about uh, 150 miles from Amritsar. And I travelled by foot. My family uh, members could not come with me because uh, there was a lot of killing and so we did not want to put all eggs in one basket. So I travelled in one caravan. And I found up to the border, that is Amritsar, the victims were Hindus and Sikhs, especially women and children. And when I crossed over, I found it was the same kind of drama scene, but victims were now Muslims. So there was no difference that way. But when I crossed into India, I said to myself that okay, I had enough of this hatred. Uh, we have seen the killing in the name of religion. So the country we are going to build is going to be secular, democratic, and nobody would be hurt just because he happens to have a different religion. 
I'm sorry to say that uh, that hope has not been fully justified because we have had so many communal rights. But uh, I'm an, an optimist. I hope that it is lessening. No doubt there are some people who are trying to articulate or play a religious card. But still I find that uh, compared to communal rights which we had say five years ago, this the recent one in 1992 was bad. But then after that, I think it has shook the conscience of the people to some extent. But the fact that all political parties except a few are trying to establish a secular society here gives me hope. Can you give me some idea of how terrible it was to make that journey? Did you see violence yourself or were you simply aware of it at second hand? No. You see, what, when we were travelling in a caravan, uh, we had some uh, people who, are, who had guns. See, four or five guns among us. So it was not really every time that we were um, attacked, etc. But it, we could see that women or children who would trail behind after all we were traveling 150 miles and so some people would get tired but those people never joined us so we believe that somebody really kidnapped them took them away uh, I saw on both sides of the road oh hundreds of dead bodies burnt vehicles uh, scattered luggage but did show that look here some attacks have been made and uh, one thing I never forget and that is just uh, when we are nearing the no man land that means we are finishing Pakistan and we are entering India uh, we were going towards India and there was a car van coming from the other side so they suddenly stopped we also stopped we didn't speak, but we looked towards each other with sadness. There was a strange kind of kinship with us. We also had left our friends, homes, locations behind. They too had left their hopes, friends, homes behind. So we both felt that we had been torn on the rack of history. We were both refugees. So that when was this? When was your journey? That was August 1947. Before or after Independence Day? No, after Independence Day. It was a few days after that. And you were telling me in conversation the story of the Hindu woman you mentioned? Yes. Before. Then uh, a few years later, I think it was 1952, three years later, I went back to Lahore and uh, I was trying to watch the shooting of Bhavani Junction, a film produced by Hollywood. And there at the railway station, the Tonga, I saw a one girl who used to live opposite our house, Nirmala was her name. And I asked her, Nirmala, what are you doing in Tonga? And she said, you know, see that man. And she pointed towards the person. He's my husband. I said, you have got married? She said, no, he kidnapped me. But uh, now I'm married. I'm living happily. So I said, look here, women are being rescued now. I shall take you to that side. And her reply was, who will marry me now? Because for all purposes, I have been living with a Muslim. And will Hindu society tolerate it? I said, I'm sure your parents, your relations. She said, yes, my parents met me on the border. But they refused to accept me. And now he treats me well and I'm living happily. So such uh, instances are such, such this kind of fallout of partition, the human side, are that side where really some cruelty has been done. I think those instances haven't come out well so much. I think they should because they would uh, somehow make both sides think what happened because now everybody is each side is blaming the other and I can tell you from my experience that there was no difference between Islam or Hinduism if you think Islam has more generosity 
and uh, Hinduism has more accommodation. It's all on paper. I saw both of them being inhuman and killing each other. This, um, I don't know whether I call it a protest or a dharma or whatever, but this event you have tonight, what is its significance? Well, we, both sides, uh, some 150 human rights activists and others are going to burn candles on the border. Our counterparts will also come to that side and they will also kindle lights. Uh, the purpose is that we are sending a message of friendship and amity. We think the governments have been too mulish, too wooden. And uh, we are trying to tell that to care if the people were allowed to meet, then there will be change in the atmosphere. That is our purpose. And uh, we are, this now we are entering the 50th year of independence. We hope to do a bigger thing in 1997 when we finish this one year. We hope more people will come and uh, we hope that this message would have spread all around. But at the moment the significant purpose is just to radiate the message of friendship. Initiate the discussion and uh, request thereafter uh, our chief guest, Justice Rangarad Mishra, and uh, Mr. P. Upendra, who uh, uh, does not need any introduction. So, also Mrs. Mankeka to Delhi audience. She and me had a very old acquaintance. We worked together in the area of uh, population and family planning. I respected Mr. Mankeka and and Ms. Man 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 Manpeka, Dr. Bhaskar Rao,